Well, beautiful feast day today for Christ the King. It's a special feast for me personally because liturgically it was the feast day that I had for my very first Mass as a priest 21 years ago, you know, for the Feast of Christ the King. And I was so excited to celebrate Mass and on this great solemnity, you know, because it just really it sounds so epic, right? Jesus, King of the Universe. It almost sounds like a major, like, Marvel hero or something, you know. But, of course, even better than that, you know. The, the, the famous story of, you know, Jesus at the end of time coming and separating the, all humanity as, like, sheep on one side, goats on the other, you know, and here we're in a generation where we use the word goat in a positive way, you know, oh, you're the goat, the greatest of all time, G-O-A-T, you know, oh, who's the goat, you know, by the end of time, I hope I'm not a goat, you know, they're the worst of all time, I guess, at the end, you know, so, so definitely uh, when Jesus comes and does this, it makes us think, yeah, I want to be on Jesus' team. I want to be on the sheep team, you know, because that's, that's the ones who make it into eternal life, right? Eternal blessedness into entering into the fullness of the kingdom of God. You know? But when we look at the criteria that Jesus lays out to determine who's a sheep and who's a goat, it's something that really tugs at our heartstrings, doesn't it? It's so tangible and applicable for us because we can imagine, right, these, these aspects of Nakedness, hunger, thirst, you know, sickness, loneliness, you know, being in prison and all, all these things, being a stranger. We can all relate to that at some level, right? Now, here's the thing. Jesus, our king, he can relate to it as well. Because he became one of us, because he's a servant king, a humble king, he knows all about it. He knows nakedness, hunger, thirst, you know, being a stranger, being sick, being in prison even. He experienced all of it. He practices what he preaches. He knows what it feels like. And in his ministry, he was so faithful to being there for people, feeding them, visiting them, healing them, you know, encouraging them, re reconciling them. Right? This is, he, he was living this. And so he is someone that gives us directives, but he demonstrates it himself. And to think that his Kingdom was instituted primarily on the throne of what? The throne of the cross. Because he is a servant king. His kingship is for salvation and redemption and to give over to his loving father, right? It's a love of God and love of us that he is king. And so he is the one who defeats our true enemies of sin and death, right? And he is a conqueror, right? When we think of a king, we want him to be mighty and powerful, so yes, though he humbled himself and experienced all the, the weaknesses and struggles of human life on earth, he is victorious. He is triumphant over the two very things that we have no uh, ability to defeat on our own, sin and death. So he gives us mercy and eternal life. What an awesome king. What a great God we serve. May we just love him, you know, with all of our hearts, you know, and open wide our hearts to him. The readings today present Jesus as the king of the universe in the theme of shepherd. He's a shepherd for us. So he's one who's going to lead us on the right path and, and tend to our needs. And it's so nice to think about that. Jesus comes to us as king not as a power trip for himself, not as suddenly eager to just suddenly give us a whole bunch of rules to follow. But how does he come to us? To, to lead us, to find, he seeks us out. He comes after us if we're lost or stray, if we're hungry or if we're, we're, we're broken. He comes to bind us. You know, if we're weak, he'll strengthen us, as the prophet Ezekiel describes. You know, he's, he's coming after us in a, 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 with a yearning for us to be found and to be brought back on the right track, to be reconciled. So what an amazing king we have. And so would that every baptized Christian, and in fact, would that every person in the whole world experience this aspect, first and foremost, of Jesus. We want the world to worship Jesus, to adore him as the king of the universe, but it starts with letting him come to us first and to heal us, to, to bind up our wounds, to strengthen us in our weaknesses, to give us courage and, and grace. And that's what he does. And so sometimes I find in our Christian journey, a lot of times I, I hear people say, you know, when they talk about praying, they always pray for everybody else. But I said, well, do you pray for yourself? Oh, no. No, Father, I never do that because, you know, I, you know, I, I don't want to, 
you know, that's kind of selfish, or I need to pray for others, you know, and, you know, and, and, but, and that's beautiful, right? It's a beautiful gesture to think of others first and to pray for them. But Jesus would want us to open our hearts and to pray for what we need, to let him in to our hearts where we need him the most. To not be shy to say, Jesus, I'm hurting here. Jesus, I'm in need here. Jesus, I'm weak here. Jesus, I'm trapped here. Jesus, I'm a prisoner to these different addictions or struggles. Jesus, I'm feeling alone and a, like a stranger. Jesus, I'm feeling hungry for more in life. I'm, I'm thirsty for more meaning. I'm, I, need, I need you, Jesus. I feel naked. I feel like such low self-esteem. I don't know who I am. You know, whatever it is, or Jesus, I'm worried, or I'm afraid, or whatever it could be. Jesus wants to meet us there. Will we let him? In the Feast of Christ the King, it's good for us to make sure that, at least for us, that we're letting him into those areas of our life, to let him be king where he comes to us as a good shepherd, you know, into these areas of, of need and want and desire, and let him bind us up, let, us, let him forgive us, to, to come to him in confession and let him bring us forgiveness of our sins, to come to him in prayer and share with him our hearts. Yes, definitely, we need to pray for other people, you know, here on earth or the souls in purgatory or whatever it is, but we also, Jesus would want us to pray for ourselves because that allows him to be that good shepherd. To, he wants to seek us out and find us in our darkness and in our straying, in our brokenness to heal us. I know in my own life I've been so blessed in ways where I feel like Jesus has really ministered to me, you know, and, and, and brought me into to better places in, in my spiritual life. I'm just... I really feel that God desires such a great intimacy with all of us. But then from that, we can then have a greater awareness and confidence of the goodness of God. He is so good. He's faithful. He's true. He's able to help us in ways that others in the world can't. He can touch us in those areas of our heart that are beyond our reach, but not his reach. And so from that, we can go forth in that confidence and share that good news with others coming from a ex personal experience. So if we s allow the Lord into our hearts first and allow him to minister to us in all these areas, then we can go and share the good news with others and to be instruments for Jesus to help seek out the lost, seek to bind up those who are wounded, to strengthen those who are weak. We can be shepherds in our own sort of way, right, in bringing them to Jesus. And hopefully they too will experience God's mercy and his healing. You see, we're in this in-between time between now and the second coming, right? So the kingdom of God can already be experienced now, but between now and when it's definitively established at the end of time, now is the time of mercy, right? At the end of time is the time of judgment. We, you know, perfect justice will be meted out to all humanity. So now is the time of mercy. Now is the time to approach the Lord and to let him wash us clean, heal us and save us and renew us and love up on us and make us new, now is that time. So let's not wait for ourselves or to share that good news with others. Later is the time of judgment, but now is the time of mercy. The good shepherd is with us, especially comes to us in confession, but also in the most amazing way in the Eucharist. So humble, so intimate, able to get right into our very bodies and souls, the Holy Eucharist. What an intimacy with our King, Jesus stands at the door of our hearts and he knocks. He wants to come in. He wants us to enthrone him as king on the throne of our hearts. And communion is such a beautiful way for us to do that. We literally take him into ourselves and enthrone him in the depths of our being. And may we enthrone him today in this way. Because when he finally does come at the end, I love how St. Paul describes how Jesus will be all in all. Right? He, he will fully hand over the kingdom to the Father. And elsewhere in Scripture, St. Paul talks about the three main things, are faith, hope, and love. And at the end, faith will give place to sight. Right? Faith, we won't need faith in heaven at the end because Jesus will be established in his kingship and his love and in his power. We won't need to have faith anymore because it's, we'll see him with our own eyes. We'll behold him. It'll just, there'll be just perfect evidence. Hope will give place to fulfillment. We won't have to hope anymore for that final day when Jesus will set all things right. It'll be fulfilled. And that's a guarantee. We're on the winning team. Even if it doesn't always seem like it in the world we live in today, guaranteed Jesus wins in the end. 
we know the end of the story. And so we have a hope that one day will give place to fulfillment. So with faith, hope, and love, faith will give place to sight. Hope will give place to fulfillment and realization. And all that remains, St. Paul teaches us, will be love. Love in its fullness, in its healing, in its eternity, in its joy, and all of that it is. The intimacy between God and us and us with each other. So let's make sure that between now and the second coming, we take advantage of this time of mercy to let the good shepherd in, to make sure others know about him as well, and to live in faith, hope, and love until one day all that remains is love in the kingship of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.